Uh, hello, my name is Joseph Hasse. I'm 22 years old and I'm a Palestinian refugee. I lived in Lebanon most of my life, all of my life. Uh, I lived in a refugee camp uh, in Dubai, in a Christian refugee camp. And I, the first time I went outside Lebanon was when I first came to America four months ago. America, to me, prior to the show, is the enemy in disguise. Because our first enemy is Israel, and the enemy behind the enemy is America. Because America is giving money to Israel, is giving weapons to Israel. Uh, kind of, America adopted Israel throughout the veto right in the United Nations, throughout giving them uh, weapons uh, and supporting all kind of acts that Israel does. I felt that all Americans are ignorant towards the world, towards what's happening in the world, towards supporting their governments, supporting wars against other people that basically didn't harm America. Just the idea of, of seeing America and the United Nations using the veto right towards Israel started building our first impression. Watching how America would present the Arab world in its news by watching CNN or uh, Fox News and all that, just the way they present us, the way they, they, they relate to us as terrorists, started forming this ideological problem that these people look at us as if we are enemies. The films that I watched are basically films that related to, to Native Americans with Americans, like one of my favorite films was The Little Big Man, uh, The Searchers, John Ford's films, uh, George Lucas films, all the films that I watched always, I always looked at the, I always had to look, had to look to minorities in films. I always wanted to see the neglected part, like, it always built to me, the idea of watching all these films made me look at America as an oppressor. Though the films were in negative towards America, but I had, I always had to look at them as Americans are the oppressors because because I couldn't not relate myself to Native Americans and relate America to Israel. So every time I watched uh, a film in which Native Americans got killed or uh, land was stolen and in the end the hero will be triumphed that he killed Native Americans, I always, I always was against the American hero because basically if you really look into the details and look under what they're showing, they're showing that these people attacked. I mean, maybe Native Americans, when they first saw Columbus, they thought, oh, well, he's going to be a nice guest. Since I got accepted to come on the road and somehow represent who I am and my background, I got really scared of it because I wanted, I didn't know if I'm ready to go. I don't know if I had enough knowledge, enough, enough power of persuasion, enough I, I didn't know if I knew myself and who I am and my race enough to come and present it. But after all, I said, no, this is, this is the chance I need to go and show the people who we are. This is a chance by which we might have a voice. I might not, I might not get another chance and I'm not going to blow it. Everybody was supportive, not only supportive, but they were backing me up and they were saying, you have to go. You're, you're like our only voice. You're our ambassador. You're coming out from the camp to show the world who we are and where we are. And, what is going on in our lives. And no, this is, I never expected to be friends with an Israeli. And I always thought that an Israeli is an enemy. And the only way to talk with an Israeli is through a bullet. And that changed really fast. That changed in like less than a month. Because meeting guys, seeing how much we are similar, seeing how nice he is towards me, seeing how much he shares the same things, I stopped being able to, uh, to remember him as an Israeli. I started remembering him as a human, as an artist, as a friend. An Israeli wasn't his only description. It became, it became a, a secondary thing. The primary thing is Guy as a person. And I think that made me grow up as a person too, just to relate to a different person not not by looking back on all my history and all the things I learned. I just changed because he's a good person. And I, and I thank God sometimes 
that I met a good Israeli, not not a like a right wing angry Israeli, because that would make me more angry. Going back home, though, I went back home for a short time. I felt that the only thing I want to talk about is my friendship with an Israeli, because that's what I care about, and that's why my my family and friends and neighbors care about knowing, and they should know about it. And because I built this strange relationship with Guy, I told him about it. I told him about how this person is great, nice, loving, take cares of me, and how much I love him, and how much I don't care anymore if he's an Israeli or not. And my the first thing my father said is that, you know what, there's, there's Palestinians who are bad, there's Lebanese who are bad, there's Israelis who are bad, there's Palestinians who are good, Lebanese who are good, Israelis who are good. And maybe we should stop looking at, at the uniform, at the name, at the language, and start looking at the humans. All we need is communication. I think if, if now that I know that there's one Israeli in Israel that I know, when there's a bombing, I get, my heart starts beating because there's a friend I know there. And if every Palestinian knew an Israeli, they will think twice before, before making uh, both of them. Israelis would think twice before bombing and Palestinians would think twice before bombing because it doesn't matter anymore who started the struggle. I don't know if he'd done anything in the Middle East. I know that he spoke in Cairo, but I think we're tired of promises. We're tired of talking in vain. We're tired of just mentioning what should be done and not doing anything. Uh, we're tired of stating the obvious and not working on making this obvious real. And I think that Obama got the uh, Nobel Prize and I think that he got it as a loan. He, he got it, he, they, they lent him the Nobel Prize until he does something. It's just like a motivation because he did nothing yet. And the idea of a black president, an African-American president, by itself is beautiful. Because Obama is African-American, everybody got so excited. It doesn't mean that he's a great president or not a great president. Before coming here, I thought that Americans had easy life and very ignorant. After coming here, I still believe they have easy life. And most of them are ignorant, but... The easy life doesn't come easy. You have to earn it. So their time is really full. These people have, they work, they come back home, they eat, they watch TV, they talk a little bit, they sleep. They, their time is full. They're not living and doing nothing. I would love to be in America because in the end, nobody is from here. I mean, this is what I was thinking. Every time I go to a cab, I ask, where are you from? Russia, Armenia, Iran. Nobody is American in America. And being a refugee who doesn't have a land, being in a place where everybody is not accepted in his main, in his homeland, makes something in common between these people. I like people in America because nobody is American. Everybody is away from his homeland trying to make a new life where he was not accepted there. I think it's starting to fade. The idea of, of Arabs or uh, terrorists, just reintroducing the Arab as, as a good person just is rechanging the idea towards Arabs because I think they should go, get over it. It's been nine years since 2001 and I think they should stop portraying us as uncivilized, as terrorists because it's not true. Because if you just go back a little bit in time, you'd see that before that happened, we were, we were the nicest people on earth, and we still are, but we're, we've, been, we've been portrayed in a bad way.